Welcome to Explore with Kids. So in this video, I'm going to check out a Voltex 200 amp hour lithium battery, which I purchased of eBay. Previously, I've purchased a Voltex 100 amp hour, and this battery is still going strong, so I thought, why not give this one a go? Now, the reason for this purchase is we're currently looking at crossing the Simpson Desert and trying to cram everything to the back of this ute behind me with the five of us is looking like it's going to be a bit of a challenge. You know, I didn't want to carry a gas bottle or carry large stoves or barbecue. I wanted something light. I recently did a review on a, uh, using an induction cooktop with a 100 amp hour battery that I had and found out that it just wasn't going to cut it. So I needed to find a larger battery with a higher continuous discharge. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the comment section below. Having previously used the Voltex brand before, I had no issues with deciding to use what this battery had and decided to see what else they had on offer. You know, I did look at Kassan, which I did like, but they had nothing with that higher continuous discharge available. So I went with the Voltex. Please note, I'm not sponsored by this company and paid for everything out of my own pocket. You know, I wanna keep this channel honest and without bias and will continue to pay for goods I test and review out of my own pocket. In return, would love it if you could subscribe to this channel so I continue to do more of these videos. Now, let's look at the specs. It's a 200 amp hour lithium battery weighing in at around 19 kilos with 200 amps of maximum continuous discharge. The operating temperatures for charging are zero to 55 degrees and a discharge temperature from minus 25 to 65 degrees Celsius. There's a life cycle of 3000 cycles and a warranty of five years. The dimensions of this battery are 522 by 218 by 238 uh, millimeters. Now this battery can also be run in series or parallel. So what did I pay for this battery? I paid around $900 when you take into account the discounts and coupons offered by eBay at the time it was available. You know, that's a pretty good price when you consider uh, other specs of this same type of battery and what else is out there. So the BMS or battery management system uh, monitors uh, each cell uh, within the battery during normal operation and it basically also protects it from overcharge, over discharge, overheating and short circuiting. So I haven't tested any of that in this video. Now, what you do get with this battery is when you open up the box, you get the battery itself, some bolts, washers, and spring washers, and a pretty good manual. You know, it's probably one of the better manuals I've seen in recent times, and basically gives you all the specs and shows you how to connect the battery. The battery itself is really well made, and you have these rope type grab handles, which do its job, and probably easier to drop in in tighter spaces with these types of handles. Now, looking at the bolts that come with a battery, in my opinion, they're a little short. When you add a washer and a spring washer, it doesn't leave much thread left, and especially at a 200 amp hours continuous discharge, you're not using small lugs anymore. And it'd be nice if they're about five mils longer. Now, we also have an LCD on top of this battery, and when you press the cycle button, it toggles between the battery capacity and voltage. However, when you press the settings or cogwheel, it doesn't do anything. So I'm not sure if it was supposed to do something or if there's other batteries that use this button, um, but this one, it did nothing. So for the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna bore you with all the actual footage of the actual test, but basically show you what I did and the results. 
you know, the way I tested the battery is the same as I've done in previous videos. If you've not seen them before, um, I'll put some links in the comment section below. So let me prefer if you like this style of video, if you want to actually see the actual test going on. Um, you know, just know time's a bit tight these days and we're always fast forwarding the videos to get to the important section. So let me know if you actually want to see that. Um, let me know in the comment section below and I'll adjust the videos depending on what everyone says. So the equipment I'm going to use to test this battery is the Victron Bluetooth Smart Chump with an amp monitoring, app monitoring. A 15 amp Victron set, uh, charger set to lithium propyl and an Enerdrive 2000 watt inverter. For the load, I'm going to use the Westinghouse 200, 2000 watt induction cooktop, which I've used previously, uh, a halogen light and whatever else is running in the canopy, such as the King's 85 liter upright fridge uh, or lights. Did I say lights already? But anyway, the canopy lights. Now, what did I do? First up, I decided to boil some water, but wanted to test uh, if I could crank up the induction cooktop compared to what I was able to achieve in a previous video. This time I had 200 amps of continuous discharge at my disposal. To be honest, this made a huge difference in my opinion and managed to boil the water a lot faster, or it seemed to be a lot faster. So here's what the induction cooktop consumed at different wattages. At 1200 watts, it consumed about 107 amps. 1400 watts, 129 amps, 1600 watts, 143 amps, uh, and 1800 watts, 166 amps, and at 2000 watts, 172 amps. You know, to boil the water, it took less than 10 minutes from cold and used about 18% of the battery's capacity. After the first test, I realized being a 200 amp hour battery, it's actually gonna take a lot longer to draw down and consume all this, uh, all this power. So I wasn't keen on going backwards and forwards to boil water, so I decided to get out the old halogen light that I had used in previous tests. So while testing with this halogen light, you know, it's been lying around for years around the house, and I've, you know, like I said, I've used it on previous tests. This time the globe decided it had enough. So not knowing whether I had this other globe lying around, uh, I found out that the second globe, which wasn't working, uh, I thought, let's go try the globe that was there, and I put into the first one. And it was working, you know, that globe wasn't actually broken, which I thought. Um, and during this process, I found out that the reason why the other globe wasn't working was due to the globe contacts had been corroded. So anyway, two birds of one stone here. So thankfully, I also managed to find through my box of globes, you know, a spare globe. And I know I could now get both of these globes going at the same time to speed this whole test process up. So I'm not sure if you're like me, but I tend to hoard stuff and I think maybe I'll well, I hoard stuff that I think I might be able to use in the future. You know, every time I've gone to chuck something out, Law of Averages comes back and I needed the part I chucked. Please let me know if I'm not the only one that thinks this way. Anyway, here are the results. After the first test managed to consume 194 amps when the inverter cut out. You know, the fridge and the canopy uh, lights were still working at the time. Then what we did was we charged the battery back up using the Victron charger and found out that it put back 197.6 amps. Now, repeat the test all over again. We got to 193.9 amps. Uh, and it was at this point I thought, you know what, let's maybe try and push this battery a little bit more. So I hooked up something less demanding such as the Makita battery charger. Found out that this drew around about eight amps uh, and overall managed to get to about 195.8 amps. Look, I know I could get more, but I just didn't feel need to. And I called the test at that point. I was really satisfied with the battery. After charging the battery back up once again, found out that it put back 197.3 amps. So, you know, this battery is what it is. So what's my thoughts on this battery? To be honest, I was pretty confident this battery would be what it says it is. You know, now I know there's a lot of stuff on social saying you get what you pay for on the cheap lithium batteries are no good since they use B and C grade cells. Um, I've said before, even if they are using B or C grade cells, the battery does what it says. The only real question is how long will this battery last? You know, how many life cycles have these cells already seen? Being not a recognized brand, this is the risk you take with these cheaper batteries and probably the main reason why these batteries are cheaper since you're not paying for that brand name. So if there is an issue with the battery, it's like, will they even honor the warranty or will the company even be around in two years? You know, buying off eBay also has its risk since eBay usually only cares about 30 days after the purchase. After that, you're pretty much on your own and rely on the goodwill of the seller to honor the warranty. If there is an issue, who do you go to? But the real test for us with this battery is when we take this setup across the corrugations crossing the Simpson Desert. 
Will this battery survive? Will the internals hold up to all the shaking and rattling? If you've been over corrugations before, you know what I'm talking about. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video. So that's it for this video. I hope it's been helpful and would love you to give us a thumbs up. And while you're checking out, you know, we're always checking out new sites and playing around with different gear and equipment. If you have any other questions or comments, hit us up in that comment section below and I'll do my best to answer any questions. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.